Hi everyone, Hungry Reader here. Welcome back to Trans Four Weeks. For those of you who are emerging from a cave or in that certain special teenage time when you were somehow never a child, let's recap the basic Transformers storyline. The metal planet Cybertron is home to sapient machine life known as Transformers, named for their ability to convert themselves into various shapes for transportation, practical functions, or just disguise. They are divided into two tribes which have been at war since time immemorial, the isolationist Autobots, led by Optimus Prime, who are generally peaceful, and the imperialist Decepticons, led by Megatron, who are usually more warlike. The war remains at a stalemate for centuries until it ends up bringing the Transformers to Earth, where they adapt themselves to transform into our local machines. The Autobots' alliance with the humans, and the Decepticons' disdain for them, is what turns the tide in the Autobots' favor, although it usually costs Optimus Prime his life. Iterations of the series may vary, but for the most part that's how it generally goes down. The series has been rebooted about ten times since its initial inception in 1984, and some lucky Hasbro employee has gotten to put their own stamp on Transformers every time. But what if I were in charge? Here's five alternate takes on the Transformers brand that I've invented. I've put enough detail into these to make a whole video about each one, so I'll just cut down to the real basics. The inception of the idea, what makes it different from all the others, the storyline, where the comics and the cartoons all get based off of, and the toy line or play pattern, because with Transformers, the toys always have to come first. My first concept is intended to correct a problem that Transformers has had since its very first iteration. Massive gender inequity. We usually get one female Transformer figure for every 50 males, and it's probably an even smaller proportion when you count female characters against males. In Transformers G-Factor, that proportion changes from 1 in 50 to 1 in 2. Transformers G-Factor brings new life to lots of classic female Transformer characters who never really got their due, and also introduces a whole new generation to be introduced and reintroduced in future toy lines. A spaceship crashes to Earth, and two others follow in hot pursuit. The Autobots and Decepticons have both arrived on Earth, but they follow each other's tracks and find something that neither one expected. Earth is already hosting. Autobots and Decepticons, and the groups don't recognize each other at all. The Autobots and Decepticons all call an uneasy truth to investigate this strange development. Optimus Prime and Megatron have never seen female Cybertronians before, and Windblade and Elita One have never seen males before. Yet they all know the same Cybertronian cultural touchstones. How can this be? Some of the Transformers don't know who they trust less, the opposite sex or the opposite faction. And the new ones aren't even reverse universe gender swaps of anyone they already know. This tenuous truce may not last long enough to learn the truth. But what about that crashed spaceship? It lands near the trailer home of two orphaned kids and their aunt, who go to investigate. Inside the spacecraft are 13 Neutrons. Child Transformers, males and females, neither Autobot nor Decepticon. Where did they come from? Who will take care of them? And will the smallest Neutron of all, Plowshare, find a happier home with her new human friends than with her fellow robots? Transformers G-Factor figures have a few important issues in common. The first, of course, is gender equity. For every male character, there is a female. Some will tell you that little boys don't want to buy female figures. I'm not too sure of this, but I threw something in to sweeten the deal anyway. Each robot is also equipped with an outsized weapon that clips onto its vehicle mode. These weapons are comically huge by design, similar to the mech tech weapons seen in previous toy lines. However, these aren't just weapons, they're actually secondary sex characteristics. If your two Transformers choose to give up fighting, they can use their weapons to propagate the species instead. 
With G-Factor, you can combine two Transformers into three. With both a male and a female toy, regardless of their faction, you can combine their weapons into a Neutron, a unique child of the two parents. The male figure provides the robot body, while the female provides the child's face and vehicle mode chassis. Each weapon also has half of a QR code. When you scan the completed code with your G-Factor phone app, it tells you the child's name, stats, and personality. Fitting this swords into plowshares theme, that's why Plowshare herself is one of the featured characters. The 13 orphaned Neutrons will have individual toys of their own. That way we can keep their parentage a secret until future toys. This next concept is more of a standalone reboot, more similar to Transformers Animated. It takes inspiration from two previous toy lines, Pretender Transformers and Animorphs, but then turns them on their head. <laughs> There's three big stories going on in Junction City. There's that controversial new embassy building downtown, which will soon be hosting a dangerous dictator. There's the reports from the nearby naval airbase of UFOs touching down all over town. And there's that mysterious caped hero who appears and disappears in the night. Teen reporters Walter, Bell, and Donald, tired of pedestrian high school news, go looking for the story behind these phenomena, only to discover that they're all connected. The mysterious hero is none other than Optimus Prime, working undercover to undermine the efforts of the evil dictator of the Trypticon Republic, Megatron. New soldiers on both sides are arriving every day, each disguising themselves as a human, and soon Junction City will be a war zone. That's right, this series involves the Transformers turning into humans. Now, they still turn into vehicles, but in most Transformers series, you start with a fairly realistic vehicle mode and build a abstract fantasy robot off of that. In Transformers Nucleon, we reverse this. You start with the robot. Instead of the astronauts and half furries seen from previous attempts at this theme, we're going to start with well-known human archetypes and build from there. For example, we all know what a firefighter looks like. How could you convert a firefighter into a fire truck? Maybe not a realistic human figure, but a stylized cartoon character could easily be changed into a truck if the colors match well enough. Each figure's human mode would also have a simple transformation into their real robot mode, similar to the old Ghostbusters haunted humans figures. Because this series relies on stylization and exaggerated cartooniness, I'd really love to be able to get the legendary Derek J. Wyatt of Transformers Animated fame back to work on this one. For higher price points, we'd employ combining figures. For example, Hero Optimus Prime would come with a Prime Mobile that he could drive in human mode, but also convert it into a trailer for his truck mode. And of course, as per tradition, he could combine with it to form his super robot mode. Similarly, Dictator Megatron comes with a limousine that he can either ride in or combine with plus chauffeur Starscream. Let's move from reboots to sequels. The era from 1996 to 2002 was called the Beast Era of Transformers when it focused on organic, naturalistic looking animal modes. The original was Beast Wars, which gave way to Beast Machines, Beast Wars the Second, Beast Wars Neo, finally Transformers Car Robots, which of course brought the whole thing full circle. But the, um, the name Beast Wars was very well chosen because there were little Beast Wars popping up all over in the fiction. But there was one story that was only implied and never fully told. Transformers Sun Wars! <coughs> it's far in the future. The Transformers' history with Earth is now a distant and uneasy memory. The Autobots have now evolved into the Maximals and their champions now bear the name Optimus in memory of their greatest hero. But one champion is more mysterious than most, Optimus Binary. A skeleton crew of Maximals is deployed to a mysterious planet with no apparent life forms because it orbits an Energon sun. Only plant life can withstand such powerful radiation, and the crew disembarks in the form of the herbaceous locals, which turn out to be sapient themselves. But what has become of Optimus Binary? And who is the mysterious female robot that has taken his place? And if this planet is so deadly to Transformers, what are Predacon artifacts doing here?
That's right, my few fellow Beast Machines fans, at long last, Botanica's story. I extrapolated this whole story from a few little clues in Botanica's debut episode. First of all, her name was originally Binary. Second, the silhouette of her that we saw in her first appearance was not very feminine looking. And third, she has basically two humanoid modes. So what if Binary had actually had two robot modes, one male and one female? And the male mode, as we saw, was the mode that was replaced when she took her new form. It would really throw a curve into the story if her teammates felt they didn't know their leader after all. Now, the problem with doing any kind of plant-based action figures is that plants don't really scream action. So I turned to a few obscure sources for uh, inspiration on this one, including a cult classic from the 80s, Rocks and Bugs and Things. Sun Wars Transformers convert from robots into trees, plants, fruits, and vegetables. Their weapons become bases to stabilize them, so you don't actually have to plant them to make them stand up. But where's the fun in a plant that can't move? This is where those sapient talking trees come in. Taking a cue from Transmetals and Beast Wars Neo, every Sun Wars Transformer has a third mode, either vehicle or animal. For example, Botanica herself has her robot and flytrap modes, and also a flying saucer mode inspired by her hover skirt from the Beast Machines cartoon. For another example, here's Cindersaur, a name you may recall from Generation 1, although this version is also female, transforms into a jack-o'-lantern, and her third mode is, eh, you guessed it, a pumpkin coach. Why is it called Sun Wars? Well, because calling it Plant Wars or Beat Wars or something like that would be really dumb. But I also had a kind of a nutty idea for a gimmick. You know those animated solar-powered figurines that people put on their dashboards? Of course, this would only be something you could do at the higher price points, but it would be pretty awesome to have a solar-powered Transformers toy, wouldn't it? Like two classic 80s toys in one, Transformers and the dancing Coke can. For the smaller price points, you could give them something you almost never see in Transformers toys, glow-in-the-dark paint applications. This next one is another Beast series, but it goes in a very different direction. It also aims at a very different toy buying demographic than usual. Transformers RAIN! Present time, present day. Our young hero Mingan Birch is almost inconsolable because the beloved family cat Buster has disappeared and they fear the worst. The family visits the animal shelter to adopt the new pet and to Mingan's surprise, they choose a dog, Casey, a friendly and playful German Shepherd. But Casey hates cats more than any dog Mingan has ever seen. He'll chase them out of town if you let him, which makes for real trouble when Buster reappears and Casey takes off after him, dragging Mingan behind. With Casey's help, Mingan finds out where Buster has gone, a special clearing in the middle of the park which is home to dozens of cats, including a lion who introduces himself as Optimus Pride. That's when Mingan realizes that Buster is very different, and so is Casey. His cat and dog are soldiers in a war, and have been so since their spaceships crashed on Earth a mere 200 years ago, before we had powered machines. That's right, the cats are the good guys in this story. Why are the Autobots cats when a dog is man's best friend? Well, for one thing, I want to explore the idea of Transformers who weren't antagonistic toward humans on either side. Buster and Casey are enemies, but they're both loyal to Mingan and won't do anything to harm him. And for another thing, the Autobots are supposed to be the peaceful ones, and, you know, let's face it, when was the last time anyone cried havoc and let slip the cats of war? Transformers Reign, yes, as in Reign of Cats and Dogs, would in fact have action figures, and they'd be fairly standard beast mode action figures with uh, individual action features. But for the most part, it would focus on a very different toy line than usual. Plushes. 
Through relatively simple systems of zippers, snaps, and buttons, your Transformers Rain cat or dog toy would unfold and convert into a large plush robot, perfect for wrestling, dressing up, or defending against whatever's under your bed. They'd range from tiny beanie-sized ones, similar to the Softimus Prime and Slumber Bee toys that came out some years ago, to super soft plush dolls that might be life-sized in animal mode, or bigger! Finally, let's talk about a story that I have to share the credit for. Long ago in another life, before I was the hungry reader, I had a girlfriend who was really into shoujo manga, especially that kind of uh, male harem where, like, Uron Host Club or Fruits Basket, where you have one girl and dozens of guys. Our obsessions kind of got mixed up and we started making up a new story and we came up with Transformers Rabu Robotsu, or as we playfully titled it in English, Transformers She Loves Me Bot. Hey, who's that stereotypical girl late for school on the first day, running out the door with a piece of toast in her mouth? Her name is Elba, and she is about the simplest character you can imagine. But the school that she's about to attend is very different than what she expected. Before she even makes it to her first class, she has a run-in with two strange boys. Hinote Jetto, who is very polite but cold and officious, and Kiai Hoshi, a born troublemaker who hangs out with his three goons, Sora, Don, and Bibi. Before she knows it, she instigates a fight between Jetto and Hoshi which escalates to the point where they drop their disguises. Welcome to Big Powered High School, where there's 10 boys for every girl, which excites Elba until she learns she's the only human attending. The secret of Big Powered High School is that it's a place for alien shape-shifting robots to learn to be more human. Principal Megatron would never have let her join if not on the advice of Mr. Conroy, or sorry, Convoy, the former principal, who is now the wise janitor. Big Powered High School was founded to teach the Transformers to be more like humans, specifically because humans, despite our occasional wars, are the most peaceful race in the universe. But there's a dark secret behind this school, and it has something to do with Jetto, Hoshi, and the cute but selfish baby known only as Uni. And yes, Uni is exactly who you think he is. Now, this is one where the marketing really departs from the standard Transformers model. Whole cartoons have been canceled because they got too much of a female fan base and everyone knows that girls don't buy action figures. This is incredibly stupid and short-sighted because girls buy lots of stuff. Just sell them something besides action figures. Transformers, She Loves Me Bot would sell all kinds of t-shirts, backpacks, pencil eraser toppers, keychains, and eventually, yes, dolls. Like Transformers Nucleon, this series features Transformers who take human form. But this time, there's a major emphasis on their physical attractiveness. Thus, we must step where many fear to tread. Non-converting figures. Elba, Jetto, Hoshi, and all the other main characters would be available as 12-inch fashion dolls, whom you could transform into their robot modes with the aid of snap-on armor pieces. One interesting aesthetic decision that we came to in making this up was to greatly simplify the transformations. We decided that the toys shouldn't be able to bend in any way that a human can't, so the transformations would actually be based on yoga poses. With this in mind, we could accomplish simple but effective transformations by building the armor design around a yoga pose. It might not be very satisfying for the expert Transformers fan, but the point of this series is to bring a whole new demographic into the Transformers fandom and get them hooked for life. So yeah, this is how much I think about Transformers. I make up whole toy lines that I myself will never see a dime from. The fact is, I love these ideas so much, I'd be happy to see them brought to life even without any compensation. That's why... With this video, I am hereby releasing all five of those ideas into the public domain. All Transformers characters, trademarks, and indicia remain, as always, the property of Hasbro Toy Group. But if Hasbro likes my ideas and wants to steal them from me, well, you can't steal what I'm freely giving you. A well, heck, even if you don't work for Hasbro, but you know one of those fly-by-night 
transforming toy companies that makes toys inspired by Hasbro characters. You know, it's free for you too. I just want to see it happen. But you know something, Hasbro? These aren't my only ideas. If you like these and you want to hear more, you know, I'd drop everything and move to Rhode Island. All you got to do is bend a finger, you know? I got lots more to share. Think about it. Hope you're hungry.